1991 Atlanta Falcons, California State champs. We had beaten every single team on the West Coast. We got all these guys down there, and it's, it's, it's a free fall. Down in the corner, batted, they fight. Touchdown! I said somebody catch it! And they said, why did you take Darian Connor? And I said, because he's tougher than a Waffle House steak. <laughs> Hey, and they may not have yeah. been sober, but I love that. Y'all had so much fun. Y'all did all the craziest things, but you still won games. Yeah. Right? And you still dominated teams. And, and one of the things that we want to look at now is how you dominated the, the state of California, beating the 49ers twice. <laughs> California. California. Let's take a look at that. California now. State Champions. <laughs> Don't be scared. Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> 1991 Atlanta Falcons, California State Champs. We had beaten every single team on the West Coast. We beat San Francisco in San Francisco, and the Falcons had never beat the Rams in L.A. Oh, beating them twice, beating the 49ers, I sure hope so, man. That'd be great. That'd be great. I don't know how long it's been since they've done that around here. There goes Tolliver, a long, high pass, down in the corner, batted. They fight. Touchdown! 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 Oh, my gosh! I'd rather have luck than skill, baby. I said somebody catch it! I closed my eyes, they said... <laughs> that was the catch. That was, nice that, that was the first catch. That was, that was some fun times, man. Absolutely. What was I love you, man. You, you made it <laughs> successful. What was the locker room like after that? Oh, oh <laughs> man. You, you know, we had beaten the 49ers, who had been dominating us for years. Yes. And that was, yeah, we yeah. beat them twice in the same season. Right. And, I mean, that pretty much springed us into the playoffs because yeah. we won that game. We had the edge over them. So we both finished 10 and 6 that year. But we beat them twice, so we had to ask, so that brings us into the playoffs. Kicked them out of the playoffs yes, for got the them first out time. And got us in, and the locker room went crazy, man. I mean, you, can you, if you saw what happened on the field, <laughs> when we got back into the locker room, it was just like that. So, and they were like the standard of the, that era, right? Like the 80s and oh, 90s. Absolutely. They were the team to beat. They, were they the won team three beat. Super Bowls in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And, yeah. and in, the, in the pregame, y'all, you're – that the pregame for one of those, or for both games, your your locker room was going crazy, and, and their locker room was very stoic and, and silent, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> what was that? What was that like? It took on the persona of Bill Walsh, you know. Right. He was yeah. a genius. He was tactical. This man here was wide open and fun, and we were rolling beforehand. That's kind of how we played. Okay, we went to the league meetings, and all the head coaches there. You guys will love this because you know who I am. And Bill Walsh says, Jerry, I would like to have dinner with you and our wives, I think we should go out to dinner together. <laughs> and I said, why is that, Bill? He said, you're at the zenith of all of football. I said, Bill, I don't talk like that. Should I hit you in the mouth or what? I didn't know if it was a compliment or what. <laughs> I was at the zenith. Said, what the hell is that? <laughs> Chris, so, one thing I want to say to you that I want to get overlooked, you see the trophy, right? Yeah. Who does that, man? What other, what other team would have a make a trophy and put <laughs> California State champion? That's what I was wondering. That was, that was like, so what cool. Is, I was like, the first did time they do it ever happened, right, Jerry? Right? Never yeah. happened. Never happened yeah, since before. Nobody had yeah. ever went and swept the whole <laughs> that, left coast. That's what kind of swag we had. That's the kind of fun we had. The 49ers. San Diego. The Raiders. The Raiders. Seattle. Yeah, we played Seattle. We got them all. We got them all. Everybody on that road. Raiders. And who else would think about doing it? Right, that's right. <laughs> man over there. That, that was, I thought it was so cool. History, and, what, yeah. and, what, and what stands out to you about those games that from the Niners or the Rams or any of those teams in, in California? Uh, the biggest thing that stands out the most to me were why were we in the NFC West? 
Yeah. With the NFC South, right? Okay, mm-hmm. we're in the South, but you had you still had the Falcons and the Saints, and you had the LA Rams, Rams and, and San and Francisco. California. It didn't make any sense how they had those listed in the yeah. West for all those years, but um, but it was a long flight every year. There were some great road trips, but that was some great. They were on the road. That's what yeah. it was. They were on the road, and those teams were strong too. Back in the back in the nineties, Rams they, were stout. They was, they was pretty strong, man. So yeah. it was a time for me to get focused. Well, the Forty Nineers had the best team money could buy. Oh yeah, there was no salary cap. And Di Bartolo had, money. you know, all the money he wanted. Yeah. So we couldn't outbid and get anybody. They they could come get your players because with they no salary the cap, the, you go where the money. You guys is. remember some of those plane flights coming home too after a big win? Oh yeah, oh, we're yeah. landing, no <laughs> seatbelts on. We're standing right. like this, trying to <laughs> trying to surf the landing. And, <laughs> that, that was the best times ever. Can you imagine we flying big back. We flying gambling. back from the West Coast. Uh-huh. We get back seven o'clock in the morning the next day because yeah. of the time right. change. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you talking about fun on some flights? Yeah. You know, can't Bit, tell you what happened. On some of those <laughs> didn't sleep much. Let's yeah. put it that way. We didn't sleep. One much of our linemen, Mike Ken, played seventeen years, and several of us, when we got back from those West Coast trips, we just go to his bar and kick it up the next day. And Raptors. Keep going. Raptors. 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 Yeah. 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 Play cards. Yeah. Play what about, dice. What about practice. Mondays were off. Mondays, Mondays were, were film days. Mondays were film days. Go and watch some film. You'd be a little cloudy. Tuesdays was an off day. We'd be good by Wednesday. So when, when y'all beat the, the 49ers that season twice, did y'all know, was that kind of a point where you realized that y'all might be on to something special, or was it a different point in the season? I would say it was before that. Mm-hmm. We started rolling as a team before that. I mean, you know, we man. started the season off 0-2 that year. Yeah, right. People don't remember that. They don't, yeah. They, and, they then, forget and then we, we won a game, then right. we lost another game, <clears> so we were at 3-3. Three and three. And we finished the season at ten and six. So I mean, we started rolling, and we started winning games. Started so before that, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, exactly. Started we started win. expecting we started going, to win, you know? and before you know it, man, we were just rolling wins off and rolling. Like Robert said earlier, uh, we were winning the games we wasn't supposed to win, mm-hmm. and also winning the games we should have won. Yeah. yeah. We had a new offense coordinator that you brought. You brought in June Jones in ninety one. Big difference, yeah. Year before we had Tom Rossi who went yeah. to Green Bay with Favre. And, and catching mm-hmm. catching that hail mary that I see, what is what is that like catching a, a hail mary in that? Well, when did you, mean, you know you had it? <laughs> when he stood, when he stood, up, up. Nah, when he stood up. Look, here's, a, here's the thing you don't hear. I, I got shut out the whole game. That was right. my only catch. Oh, really? Uh, yes, yeah. that was I my only win. catch. Mike, so I got set up, huh? You got the best one. Absolutely. Yeah. You got so the only I mean, one in the match. Right. We had we had been going back and forth with the score. And we ended up kicking a field goal, and then they scored a touchdown. We were up ten uh, seven, and Charles Haley buried me in the ground. I got cracked ribs, still got a lump up in there. <laughs> oh we were up ten seven, so Billy Joe went in, hit a yeah. big time comeback on the sideline. Yeah, he had a big launch yeah. the hail mary. Who caught to you. the big out? Yeah, that was Andre the big Rising. out. Yeah, Andre yeah. caught it. I mean, I'm talking about toe touch, touching yeah. on a ball big third out there, down, and a big third, third, on third down, led to the hail mary, and that just got us close enough to throw the hail mary. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but tell everyone it, it wasn't luck, though. You tell them what you guys do at practice. Every yeah, day. what did yeah, you we do pra- to well, we, with barrels? We used to do this thing. They called it. They called it buckets. And the quarterbacks used to put. The, I don't know how far. How far you guys? About forty-four yards. Forty-four from yards. Line of and their whole thing was to throw the ball into the buckets. Into the, it was a trash can. Did it after practice? And they practice. had to throw it into six the, yards from the sideline. The forty-four time. yards, so, six yards from the sideline. So side we practiced line. that. You were the bucket. Right. He was the bucket at that, that time. Yes, I mean, he, he became. It the was bucket. one of those things. You, I mean, you got all these guys down there. And it's 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 a free fall. You just mm-hmm. trying to go get the ball. Yeah. And, and and for y'all, Justin and Rob, what was it like game planning for that offense tough. for the forty nine for forty nine right now? Extremely tough because you're playing against the West Coast offense that run multiple formations, <laughs> out of two back set, and they had skilled athletes, uh, and yeah. and they had a great quarterback. And they always you got had Steve Young. somebody everywhere. Yeah. You got Steve Young. You got Jerry Rice. You got John Taylor. You got Roger Craig. You talking about all? Oh, all the well, Joe Montana was the and he Montana. Was, he was he was the when Montana but left, they picked. I know when Montana left, Steve Young was well, like, yeah, they, 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 right they in. Well, you two are like this when they had them both. I had them both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would coach him. Yeah. <laughs> And I told the defense, if any of you knock Joe Montana out of the game, I'm <laughs> right. cutting you. Right. We don't want that Steve Young coming in. We, he could we wanted Steve. Joe Montana. Yeah. Could oh, so, you, so you knew. Yeah. Oh, we, all, we all knew. We all knew. We all, we all knew he'd be a superstar. But the biggest thing we do was that when Steve was in the game, 80% of their offense was going where? 80? To their left. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? Left-handed. Oh, because he's left-handed? Boom, boomer. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that was one thing, but he was so athletic, you know, yeah, you he could do it him. all. Yeah. But you knew that most of the stuff was going to our right, his his left, you know yeah. what I mean? But overall, the offense for me was they would put somebody in every part of the field. Yeah. 
So he had a threat every, so you had to be right. I got caught a time or two cheating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned you had to cover Jerry Rice on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. In cover four, we ran a lot of cover four when we wasn't blitzing. <laughs> oh, no, we blitzed a lot. You know, ran, ran, ran a lot. But yeah. when you cover four, anytime, you know, I knew I had three on the strong side, whoever come in, but they knew it too, so their brain's Jerry in and run an option right off of me. Right. So you already. Right. Everybody knows where the ball's going. I know where the ball's going. Yeah. My goal is to cast out Jerry Rice. No. Can I tackle him? Yes, for an eight yard gain. So, my biggest thing is just make the tackle, man. Yeah. Make the tackle. Yeah. Because you know, tackle. when you're playing superstars like that, you're not, particularly as a backer, you're not going to defend the ball. You're not going to knock a ball down. Right. My goal was to knock make him down yeah. as make hard as I possibly could. Because yeah, no, right. <laughs> then you would want to come up there. That, that's right. That's, all, come that's the only the thing we had to do, man. That's so, that, I thought that was pretty cool, though. Yeah. And, and y'all, I mean, yeah, that game you won off of Hail Mary, and you, I think you mentioned a lot today. And all y'all mentioned, like, you won games that y'all might not have been supposed mm -hmm. to win. And one of those games came against Green Bay that year, uh, and that, that comeback win y'all had. Let, let's take a look at, at what happened that game. <clears throat> yeah. This man was sick as a dog. <laughs> you had the flu or something? 103. The Falcons hadn't won three in a row since 86. They hadn't won eight games in a season since 1980. They're on a roll. They're playing lowly Green Bay. But if you know Atlanta, you know the Ringo Starr song, It Don't Come Easy. Touchdown, Atlanta. You gotta wonder with Billy Joe Cobb. Oh, there it is. Chris Miller will start. So Chris Miller coming on. So 103 degree temperature. Maybe he'll Little provide size. this spark to this offense they need. And it goes and completes the pitcher for a first down and more. Touchdown, Atlanta, Steve Grossard. And here's Charles Wilson. Bumble! Atlanta, mm -hmm. no fist back. Touchdown, oh, oh, oh. Falcons. Atlanta, Andre Risen. Chris Miller believes, Andre Risen believes, and as the theme song it's here, the real. Atlanta Falcons is too legit to quit. So are these Falcons. Wow. Can't say wow. it no better than that, right? No. Too legit to quit. But you got to get take your head off to that man right That's there. Oh, that was saying. crazy. What, can you describe what was what was going on with you internally? Were you out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it was the most bizarre deal. It was Saturday night, I got sick as a dog, came down with the flu big time during the night, and, and I was uh, in my hotel room, and, and I couldn't drive. I had a Porsche 930 Turbo Porsche, and I was throwing up, had a 103-degree temperature, and so I wanted to go down to the stadium, get down there, and so we had a equipment, a system equipment guy come drive my car, and he couldn't drive a stick shift. And I got a fifty thousand dollar Porsche nine thirty turbo, right? right? And I got a garbage can between my legs, and I'm like just white as a ghost, hundred and three fever, just feeling horrible. So, I get down to the stadium. They put me in like a, a medical room, cover me up with a blanket. I'm sitting there shivering, sick as a dog, <laughs> lights out. And I remember Mike Ken walking in, our seventeen year left tackle, coming and checking on me. Long and short of it, I didn't play the first half. I wasn't planning on playing. Jerry sent in two trainers at halftime. I think we were down 10 or 14 points or something. We're getting beat. And this was, we were, we're on our playoff run, so we got to get this game, right? Yeah. I think it was after the Hail Mary game. And uh, I, anyway. should, I should t take over here with go the ahead. doctor. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, I'm on the sideline. We're getting beat. I said, get me the team doctor. <laughs> the team doctor comes up. What is coach? He says, I want Miller suited up. I want him starting at quarterback. He goes, coach, he's got 103 degree temperature and he can't play. I says, then I'm getting me a new team doctor. <laughs> I says, you're fired if he's not out. He says, I'll go take a look at him. <laughs> well, the rest, he went back in there, double IV bags. I, I'm laying there, double IV bags. I got two guys taping my ankles. I'm feeling like crap on the, on the table. Go back out and I'm shivering. I got the chills because two IV bags are putting cold fluid in your system. So I'm going out on the field and I'm freezing. I think I went, what, 12 for 18 for 185 and three, <laughs> okay. three before touchdowns. He goes out, yeah. Before he goes out, he comes up to me. He goes, I think I better watch the series. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the chills. I said, shake out there. <laughs> he says, you're going in. And you I hit what? Mike Pritchard on that. As, as, our yeah, leader, as our leader, our quarterback, yeah. I mean, he sparked the team, man. He just no. went out there and it changed everything. everything I mean, right. his play – 
I, it just changed everything. And we ended up winning that game because he showed up. 35-31, I appreciate it. Tell him how you were the next day after the game. I was sick till the fall on Wednesday. <laughs> I, miss, I miss films. I miss uh, how'd team you, practice. How'd you, do you know how you, how you got it? How you got sick? Nah, just flu bug showed up. One of those random <laughs> yeah. deals. And the good news, we got to keep the team doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but the defense made a big... Big, big turnover, time plays that big in that game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, that, was can you, uh, that was huge. That was huge. Shelly comes up, make a big hit, right? Yep. Yeah, tell tell, tell us what happened. There, the, the the situ- can you break down the situation and everything? Whoever remembers the situation. Uh, oh, I remember punt, mostly. It was on a punt. It was on a punt. Was on a punt. Right? And we, we, punt, we punted to them. Right. Yeah. And uh, we were guy, down. The guy got the ball. I think we're down 31 28. Joe Fish back school. He was going to return it. Shelly, Albert Shelly came up. He made, he stripped the ball. And miraculous bounce right into Joe Fishback's hand. He bring the ball into the end zone for the for the touchdown. Actually, so, I think that made it 31-20. That made yeah. it 31-20. Yeah, because then I hit Dre to make it 35-31 yeah. there at the and end. And we got to tell you about Albert Shelley. Okay. <laughs> He's all pro, special teams. All pro, yeah. Ask yeah. me how many days every week he practiced. He had practice. everybody say, he can't play if he can't practice. I say, shut up. <laughs> How you feeling? He goes, I'll be okay. I think about three days. Take your time. <laughs> he, all he did was El- cover kids. Elmer Shelley was like a specimen. I mean, yeah. uh, less than 2% body fat. Wow. But because he had low, his body fat was so low, he would cramp all the, all time. the time. So he yeah. would never practice. So never yeah. practice. But he would show up and play, but and he when, was a six-time when, pro bowler. It was, yeah. like a Look, it was like when, when Sunday came, you turn on the lights. Yeah. yeah. That was how he was. He, exactly. he turned on the lights and he would show up. And right. he hadn't played since last Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, that's okay. <laughs> was he one of the few guys like that that y'all remember from that team? Were there other guys like that on the team who, who did Our whole like? team was like, man, who we don't talk about is Andre Showtime Rising. Right. That dude, he was made special, for playing special. professional football. Yeah. That dude, he turned it on. and Quickness I'm t- of the I'll cut. tell you a story. Oh. He'd run the wrong routes and still score touchdowns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he That's the type of dude he was. And I he mean, would he, always he, say he, he was, was open. See, Neil, you got to throw me the ball. It's all not open. <laughs> We'd watch the about? film. Dre, you're yeah, double yeah. covered, dude. I ain't throwing that thing. You got two cats around you, buddy. He was always open. <laughs> and he was the best off the line of scrimmage, the most explosive, and the best in and out of a cut, speed cut. Yeah. Guy he came off the around. field. We just scored. He came off the field and he's laughing. And I'd say, uh, what, "What's the damn funny, Chris?" He goes, "That was not the route." We <laughs> 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 That's nothing compared what we're supposed to do. Uh, right. We got a touch. Andre, yeah. Andre, he liked the nightlife back in the special. day. <laughs> he, he was special. But he showed he up a to play. Oh, and off the field. He yeah. showed up His to play. Yeah. Andre. Thought he was better than Jerry Rice. That was his motivating. Yeah, he, he always did. wanted to be he better did. than Jerry he Rice. He was mad at every team yeah. and passed them up and didn't draft him. Mm-hmm. So I would go. We wherever we were playing, I said they had a chance to get you and they didn't want you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> hey, that was one of the best trades you ever made. Was getting Chris Hinton and Andre oh, Rice. You yeah. talk yeah. about how can you get two all-time players in the same day? For a box of biscuits. <laughs> we didn't give box anything. Box. In 91, it was Chris Hinton, yeah. Andre, Andre Rising, Rising yeah. myself, and Deion Sanders were the four Pro Bowl guys. And you got awesome. two of those guys got two of them yeah. for that year. Yeah. He was, was dynamic, man. I, I mean, yeah. he he helped me in my career because you couldn't. They shifted everything towards him yeah. right. and left me man to man. And I was the fastest dude on the field. Right. So yeah. I was like, Too easy. that is <laughs> – I'll take it. <laughs> hey, while, while we're sitting here, I want to I want to pay tribute to two guys we lost, two of our teammates, Ricky Bryan oh, and yeah. Bill oh, Fralick. Ricky, yeah. Rick, Ricky <coughs> Bryan and Bill Fralick, two wonderful yep. oh, teammates, wow. great, two guys. great guys. We I got to tell you about Ricky Bryan. Ricky Bryan. Tori Ricky Bryan. Tori Epps. Tori Epps. Tori, Tori, Tori passed too. Yeah, yeah, Tori. Ricky Bryant playing with these guys on defense, eleven on the football. We're playing the Saints in New Orleans. He gets hit, and he breaks his coccyx breaks his tailbone, mm-hmm. and we got the film, and he crawls seven yards to get in on the play. Okay. Well, he he yeah. can't even get up and run. You remember <laughs> what he was in, doing when he was jogged off the field? My back! My <laughs> back! My back! <laughs> 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 we <laughs> all <laughs> 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 But he, he was out such a hard time for that. He was out there. Down 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 down. He'll always be known for that. My back! My Now just to get in on the tackle? Just to get in on the tackle. I got a story about Ricky Bryan super quick. He would go noodling, which is going for big catfish where you you dive down deep under the water and you can't see anything. It's murky and muddy. He'd have his, you know, goggles on or whatever. And you stick your hand in a dark hole and you you put it in the mouth of a catfish and you grab their insides and you yank them out. 
What? And he pulled catfish out that were like four feet, five feet, <laughs> six feet. That's how crazy 60, he was. 70, he would do that 60, by his choice. Pound cra- catfish. Yeah, he would do that by his choice. Is that a normal Ricky, thing? Ricky was crazy. It's it was, a thing. It was just a hobby. It's it a, a thing. thing. Yeah, you I can mean, that. If you, you get a chance, if you Scott get a chance, Case. YouTube. It's yeah, a thing. Scotty it's Cash. Cool. Talk cool. about Scott Case. You oh, gotta talk about Scott Case. Scott, Scott Case was special. Who's got Scott, Scott Case? Scott is a free safety that played with us mm-hmm. in '91. He was one of the few white corners in the NFL. And listen, oh, yeah. now Scott, maybe now Scott is not prejudiced or nothing else, but he always used to say, "I ain't gonna never let a white receiver beat me." He forget he's white receiver. I've never white receiver beat But he would say that out of just making fun, just making fun. But he was so talented. And you would see him on the street, probably a buck and eighty. Yeah. But he hit like he weighed. He, he would hit like he weighed two hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. yeah. One of the toughest, hard nosed, free safeties I ever played with, and, he, and a great guy. Highly respected. He highly respected. Oh, highly respected. Started his career those, off as, as a corner dudes that and, and developed you. to a safety. He didn't yeah. just come up to make a tackle. He'd run through you. He he changed their team. He we had guys like Ricky Bryant, Scott Case, John Rady. Just John, John Rady. I played right beside John Mike, Rady. Mike Gann. We had John some fun. Was awesome. We were somewhere. <laughs> he comes up next to me, and tears are coming down his eyes. Mm-hmm. The tears like this. I said, John, you all right? He goes, no. I goes, what's the deal? He goes, I blew both knees. Because he always had the bad left knee. I goes, yeah, right. you blew the right knee too? He goes, the right knee's gone. I goes, damn, though. Anything I can do for you? He goes, no. Special teams coach says, put team. He goes, I'll play guard. <laughs> 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 you, you don't get guys like that. <laughs> I tell you what, man. You talk about a first class guy, and he used to be like the captain of the defense. He was before, six before. foot. You're six, five, eleven. No, five eleven. Five eleven. Six feet. People look at the small inside linebacker group. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, but we had we caused a lot of heck, hectic he problems on that football field. From Just, Idaho, wasn't he? Yeah, he yeah. played at the played Boys in Northern Arizona, Northern Arizona for Arizona. a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Being with the boys, was really cool. yeah, went to Boise from uh, played. Always had a dip. Yeah. <laughs> Always had a dip. Always. And he started the he fights on the second bus. He started yeah. the fights on the second bus. <laughs> fights we on had the a rule: the, the game's over, we won. If you want to ride out to the airplane, nice, quiet, get on the first get bus. Get on the first bus. If you're pissed off at somebody, get all on the fights. Bus. So Smith's on the team. <laughs> yeah. They come to me and says, "We we get a bill." The bathrooms tore out. <laughs> they broke the windows in the bus. I said, second bus is a bitch. <laughs> you ride on that, boy. And I get on just to see, you know, who is the best man. You the fish <laughs> and, and J.B. Dukes would be mad at somebody. Get on that second bus. I'll get you on the second bus. Our center was after Somebody that played DB. That's the way we work. That wasn't. We got to talk about that group too. Jamie Dukes, Mike Ken, Bill Fralick, Chris Hinton, Houston, Houston Hoover. Hoover. Yeah. Man, Mike all Ruth. Houston Hoover was O-line. underrated. He was better than everybody oh, thought. He Our O line was something else, yeah. man. Some great, great players. Yeah. That's the good biggest guys. thing. When we, when we reflect on people and the whole team, you forget it's take a lot of people to make up a whole team. You know, yeah. we got our star players, but so many guys that work so hard. I mean, like Kenny Tippin, he was another special team guy that played behind me. You know, Darren Connors. Oh, you know, Darren, Darren, Darren Connors. He was a stud, too. Yeah, Darren, so Connor just about yeah, got, man. Darren Connor just about got me fired. Right. Uh-oh. I take him in the third round from Northeast Louisiana or something. <laughs> and so I go over, remember the press conference? And they said, Why did you take Darren Connor? And I said, because he's tougher than a Waffle House steak. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think anything of it. Well, the, the next morning I come into work, there's Rankin Smith, and there's the president of Waffle House. <laughs> and they're going to fire me. <laughs> and the only way I got out of it, I see, he goes, we're on the front page of the USA for having the toughest steak. I go, any publicity is better than no <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm with By that. the way, do you want to sponsor my drag <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, another oh, oh, buddy of mine, I, I want to mention him too, man. It's Mike Reed. You know, Mike Reed yeah, Mike came Reed in that year, too. but he was on injured reserve in 91. He got injured, so he missed most of the season. How's so, he doing? He's doing great, man. Cool. He's great. Cool. Don't fight the guy, man. I know. He's an he's expert. He's a karate black girl. Girl, <laughs> That's right. Martial <laughs> artist. He's a martial artist. Oh, wow. yeah. I was so, going to say, it's great to hear every because you see a lot of the stars, the stars stars on this team were so big and brash, so you knew exactly who they were. So hearing these guys' names, like Jamie Jukes and other other players that you named, it's like important to know that these guys yeah, made yeah. the team go. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you, you guys are on a winning streak. You got 
think five straight wins. Then the last last game at the old Fulton County Stadium against the Seahawks, you won that. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that game. Oh right. man, video. We never lost to the Seahawks. Either, <laughs> either, either play. Yesterday we were in the top. Oh, he says, "Look at our team picture." He says, "This is what it's all about. Not your normal team picture." Jerry Glanville wanted everybody in the team picture. It truly is a family atmosphere here in Atlanta. Not the well, girlfriend. It's, it's not the not Adams family, but uh, <laughs> these guys are getting pretty scary, and they're starting to get everyone's attention around the NFL. Stop! We're in trouble, and we're going to get him in the end this zone. One. We got him in the end zone. To go back to what Jerry Glanville told us yesterday, we don't call plays from the sideline. We make suggestions. We give them to Chris Miller, and then it's up to him. He's going to throw a bomb to a man in the corner. Touchdown! Whips it across. Intercepted by Dion on the 38. A lot of people aren't sure the Falcons are for real, but when you keep pressure with that sort of thing and you play with that sort of confidence every week, good things happen. And the Falcons are in the playoff for the first time since Lehman Bennett coaching with Bartkowski at quarterback in 1982. Touchdown, Dion! <laughs> man, 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 what an athlete. Yeah. Wish I could dance like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got the job, and I switched Dion's... Uh, believe it or not, a safety and a punt returner. And Scott Case is a corner. Mm -hmm. So I tell him uh, tell him downstairs that he's, and Dion De comes, he goes, I don't want to be a corner. I guess it's not up for a vote. I said, I appreciate it. Which side, I'll let you pick which side. You want right <laughs> or left? He goes, they run left? They go, yeah. He goes, I'll be the right corner. <laughs> and then Scott Case comes mm -hmm. up, he goes, I'm in the Pro Bowl. Right. Uh, I'm a corner. I goes, you're not a corner anymore, son. You're a safety. He goes, well, they told me he had an open door policy. I said, it do, the door is open, get the hell out. <laughs> Became the best safety. That, yeah, that's the best that's safety. what those guys were. I mean, it, awesome. it, it yeah. just, yeah, you, you watch how they play. Uh, uh, they made me look like a whole lot better coach than I was because <laughs> they, uh, they loved it and they knew how to play. Uh, and Robert, y'all you, had the Seahawks to 13 points in that game. You said that was the fastest, you know, touchdown oh, that, you, uh, you that, saw. Can you, yeah. can you describe the, the, the feeling, the emotions of that game? Uh, you know, the way Dion played, man, he was so fast, you know, and you saw he took, we always practice when we in lateral the ball. We get an in, uh, interception, <laughs> we always lateral. That's yeah. right. We lateral back to each other. We want to keep the game going, go put pressure on them. And you saw he took the the pitch from Makar and he started up the field, Takes man. Off. I was rushing the, the quarterback at the other end. <laughs> So he's down, what was it, about the 30, 30 down yeah. here? I'm down to about the 25 at the other end. And before you knew it, he was like, boom. <laughs> and before I could react, did a second react to try to get a block, he went right by That's my cool. butt and was going into the end zone. And hit me, and I talked about it the next day. I said, damn, that's the fastest touchdown I've seen in my career right there. That's, wow. that's, that's how awesome. fast that dude was, you know what I mean? And that's how we play, yeah. you know? And we do that to that day. Today, we teach the same thing. We teach the so. same stuff. Oh, y'all still, love it. still awesome. teach that now? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Pitching the, the ball Oh, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. In fact, June, we play. June Jones is all part of these people. And we ended up, <clears> dying laughing, ended up at Hawaii, <laughs> coaching Hawaii. And... Uh, you know, we're pretty good, and we're going to bleat Purdue's going to win the Big Ten that year. They're the number one team in the Big Ten, and we're going to beat them. And uh, they got one more. I go to the linebacker, go to the curl, sit in the curl, <laughs> throw the ball. There's 40 seconds left. And I says, that, that's the game, take a knee. And here's my old play. What did you say, Jerry? <laughs> I said, well, he goes, Take a knee, start pitching it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what we yeah, always what did. We, do, we, man. Man. we did that in New Orleans when we beat them in the playoff game. You gotta, you know, we got to pitch exactly late. All we have to do is fall yeah. down. Game's yep. over. We kneel it down. Game's around. Uh -huh. so yeah. We get a pick and we're pitching that we sucker around. around. Joe yeah. Fish back yeah. in here. Joe Fish back again. He scores, but I think that the last pitch. Well, the Dion who pitched he it forward, forward, yeah. forward, yeah. forward yeah. Yeah. That was, was fun. That, that, was, our, that was our personality. That's, that was the though, attitude, man. man. What do you remember about that stadium, the Fulton County Stadium? I'll tell you what I remember. <laughs> <about that. laughs> Talk about I didn't it. like playing there. Early fall, I never liked playing there because of the baseball. We shared it with the Braves. <laughs> and we had a dirt infield. Oh. And then when you make a tackle in sand. Lay down the dirt. Yeah, but the dirt, man. You make a tackle in sand, is in your helmet, scratching your forehead. I used to hate it. 
Well, and, the, and the fans sat too far back. Yeah. It was yeah. a baseball stadium, you know what I mean? Mm. And so they had to put the football field right in the middle of it. So and it's tough in Atlanta. You know, at that time we wasn't winning. So we, I don't know if we ever sold that place out. Not you know, many times. And I tell you, in years past when yep. the Braves wasn't doing so well, they were the, you know, when they finished before October, they'd put patches of grass over there. But yeah. this, this year, 91, they they played well into the playoffs that year. Right. So we had to share the field with them well into the season. Uh -huh. And so the dirt was still out there. Yeah. <laughs> I used to stand on the mound, because the mound was on our sideline, and I'd stand on the center of the mound and look down onto the field, because I can look over everybody right. else. Yeah. Standing yeah. on the mound. Yeah. So, but I mean, the, the problem with it was just <clears> the field. <throat> I was so glad that uh, the following year we were going into the Dome. So that yeah. last game, the Seattle game, yeah. It was the last game in Fulton County Stadium because we were prepared to go into the Dome for next year. But what I liked about Fulton County, mm -hmm. and I learned this the hard way, we sold tickets by twos and fours. We came to the Georgia Dome, they sold them to corporations. Mm -hmm. So the guys were buying them 100 tickets, 50 tickets. Mm -hmm. Well, then they invite you in. Well, now you're a guest of 100 tickets and you're like this. The people in Fulton County that Party. bought their tickets. Yeah, they, true fans. Fans. they were true fans. They were and, true fans. And they may not have yeah. been sober, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 And see, that's what it was like for me. Right. It was an environment to where they wanted to party. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They, they so don't a lot forget, of teams, right. we played the Saints. Their crowd would come. Yeah, and be and more they were nuts. drunker than our crowd. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there was no stadium like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, but... Uh, that's what I remember about it. You know, yeah. I knew the, right. the Raiders are coming town. They think they're going to do this or that. Seattle, yep. it wasn't happening. We won some games there. Yeah. That's yes, what I remember. And you, and you think the, the environment caused other teams to they would come in and party the night before you? Hello. You say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just eight, saying. It's the ATL. It's the ATL. The ATL you know what I mean? Bars stay up until four. There's it's just a, a few spots a to fun go. Fun place. Visit. So, you know, and, and the atmosphere is just right. I mean, I get it. I used to get excited to walk in there before the Absolutely. game. For me, it was, it was special. Yeah. You know what I mean? Coming out of Houston, the House of Pain, now that was a special joint too. Yeah. But it was a difference coming here to Fulton County. It was something special yeah. for me. And I, I think it was special because we changed it. You know, from the late '80s, mm -hmm. '90s yeah. started building when you right. got here. But '91, mm -hmm. you know, we looked forward to Attitude. game day, and it was so electric in there, man. Attitude. You could see the, how much fun people were having Absolutely. in there. And they would yeah. identify you by your car when you rolled into the players' parking lot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was pretty so you cool. pull into yeah. the players' parking lot, and there'd be barbecues going, and they'd offer you beers before the game. <laughs> <laughs> some wings, and we drank some chicken, chicken. Yeah. Yeah. whatever. Yeah. So we're walking through there, and they're just loving you up. So it was, you know, it was cool. you felt invested with the fans. Yeah, it was and cool. Then you'd get in that stadium, we'd start playing. We didn't care about our lock. We didn't care you walked down through a dugout to get up to the field. Yeah. We didn't care about the dirt, man. It was like, all right, our fans are here. They got our back. Let's go ball. Let's put on a show. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking That was good. That environment was a great environment to play in. It brings the best out of you, so I enjoyed it. Sideline to Haynes, who ran around the man. The 35, the 30. Haynes, Haynes, touchdown! Touchdown, Michael Haynes!